Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the research credit. From the name of the credit, research credit, it's designed, it's aimed to encourage, to entice taxpayers and company to invest in related research and development activities. The reason is, is to improve the economy, improve technology, improve the discovery of new businesses and processes. So a credit is available to taxpayers for qualifying expenses related to research and development. So you spend money on research and development, we will give you some sort of a credit, an incentive to, to help you in this process, also known as business-related research and experimentation. The aim is to promote research. And research credit is composed of three components, incremental research activities credit, a basic research credit and an energy research credit. So we have different type of credit. We'll discuss each one of them separately, starting with incremental research credit. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The incremental research credit provides 20% for the amount of eligible research expenses. However, the 20% applies to the amount that exceeds what's called the base amount. The base amount is giving, or the company will determine what the base amount is. You don't have to worry about the base amount. The base amount will be given for us. But any amount you spend above a base amount, simply put, you are spending quite a bit of money on research and development. The government is going to give you a credit. Research expenditure qualify if they are aimed at un uncovering, mean discovering new technological information for the use in developing or improved business component of the taxpayer. So the purpose has to be for that purpose. If the research is performed in-house, in other words, you are using your employees, you are using your equipment. Well, the expenses are all expenses are eligible as long as they are qualified research expenses. If you are outsourcing this process, outsourcing means you are paying an outside party consultant, and that's very common in the research industry. For example, my my wife work at JNJ, and they do use outside resources to conduct their research, some of the research. If that's the case, only 65% of the amount paid is eligible for the credit. So you cannot count 100% of the amount you paid for outsider. Insider, yes, people of the company. Now, incremental research credit. You have to be aware that this credit cannot be claimed for certain activities. What are they? Once you reach commercial production, you can no longer you can no longer claim the credit. And this should make sense because you already reach commercial production. You're no longer in the research stage. Any surveys and studies, such as market research, testing, routine data collection, that doesn't qualify. Research that's conducted outside the US, Puerto Rico, and US territories, that's not considered, uh, that's not considered for the incremental research. And research in social scientists, sciences, arts, or humanities is not. Let's take a look at a quick example just to see how they do the computation. John, eligible, uh, incur eligible research expenses of 200000 That's how much John spent. The base amount we're going to assume is 100000 So what's going to happen? We're going to take the amount above the base amount, which is 100000 above the base amount, multiplied by 20%, and the research credit is 100%. Uh, 20% of 100000 is 20,000 and that's the research credit. Now, how, what can you do with this research credit? The taxpayer can select from three options. The first option is to use the full credit and reduce the expense deduction for research expenses by 100% of the credit. So one way to do it, it's a, you would say, okay, I spent 200,000, 20,000 of it went to, toward the credit, therefore I'm gonna take a tax deduction of 180,000. Remember, there's a, there's a difference between the credit and the deduction. The credit reduces your taxes dollar for a dollar, your tax bill, the deduction reduces your taxable income. And the higher your tax rate, the higher your tax rate, the more benefit is the deduction because it's going to reduce higher higher uh, b b tax rate. 
or the second option is to retain the full expense deduction and what you do this or you can do is you'd say okay i'm going to take the full deduction 200,000 if that's the case what's going to happen to the credit you're going to have to reduce the credit by 21 percent why 21 percent we're going to assume the corporate the corporate tax rate is 21 percent as as of today so we're going to use 21 percent therefore your, the credit will be only 15,800 which is taken the 20 20 000, which is the full credit multiplied by 21 percent and reduce this amount which will become 15,800 or the third option is to use the full credit now and and amortize the remaining amount so you can take the full credit now take the 200,000 and rather than reduce it now expense it over 60 months which is five years which it means forty thousand dollar of deduction for the next four years so companies do have various options basic research credit and this basic research credit is for corporation not as not as corporation not personal service companies those are corporation which is when we say corporation c corporations are eligible for additional credit of 20 percent of basic research payment again made above a base amount this credit is not available for individual basic research payment refer to cash payment made to qualify research organization like universities tax exempt organization and the primary focus is scientific research basic research is is an original inquiry aiming at advancing scientific knowledge without any specific commercial objective this is how we design basic research you're not looking for to commercialize the, this thing you are looking to maybe discover some new technology Basic research, again, in social science, sciences, arts, humanities, as well as basic research conducted outside the U.S., are not eligible for this basic research. Again, remember, what's the purpose of these credits? The purpose of these credits is for the government, for the Congress, to entice certain activities. So this is in line with the Congress' aim of using the credit to promote domestic high-tech research. The basic research calculation is based on expenditure exceeding, again, a base amount. Basic research expense do not exceed the base amount may still qualify for the incremental research activity credit. So if it doesn't qualify for this, you might be able to use it for the incremental. Blue Corporation pays $100,000 to research organization for basic research. Blue's base amount for the basic research is 90. So which is the amount above is 30,000 multiplied by 20% will get a 6,000. The $90,000 base for the basic research can also be considered expenses for the purpose of the incremental research activities. So maybe you can use that 90,000 to get the incremental research activities. The last research is the energy research and the energy research is what? Is to entice individuals, is to entice companies, is to entice consumer to find alternative energy resources rather than rather than relying on fossil fuel and a good example will be tesla the company tesla the car electric car the energy research credit was created to encourage more energy research taxpayer can receive a credit of 20 percent of the expenses paid or incurred for energy research through an energy consortium so basically those are the three research what should you do now go to farhat lectures whether you are an accounting student cpa candidate enrolled agent look at additional resources for various credits that's going to help you understand this topic better study hard good luck and of course stay safe